And this is Sounds Television. Right, if you're sat at home watching this and you're already a slow reader, then you can sit back and bask in the reflected glory of being part of this movement. If not... If you sat there thinking, who are they? And reading about the achievements on your screen, then you're in for a musical treat. A musical discovery. Not only are they a great band, they're also very... stylish. <laughs> There's just going over there already. We're already at one. First question, up to me. You've achieved so much, what's next? You take that. Well, um, we've applied for a lot of festivals and stuff. I mean, obviously last year was a, a great year for us. Um, we're going to be touring again some of the venues we played uh, with James, those, those cities, not, probably not the same venues. Um, uh, we, we're probably going to be doing a few festivals. We can't really sort of announce any yet, but um, then yeah, new, new releases. Uh, we're working on new material. So yeah, it should be a good year. There's lots going on. Can I pick up on the James thing? Yeah. So for all the cynical, moaning, backstabbing new artists out there and aspiring artists, how much did you pay to get on the James tour? The, nothing. They, they actually paid us, funnily enough. Um, they, they, they'd they seen a video that these two did on um, YouTube and they played an acoustic song in Central Library. And um, Jim, out of James, saw that and then... Um, Next thing you know, a few weeks later, they got in touch saying, would we like to support them? Um, so we said, yeah. And then they said, right, we'll send you some details through. And then within the details, it said, you know, we'll we'll pay you X for each gig. So we would have done it for Feed, nothing. Yeah, and they fed and watered us. Yeah, yeah. Help, got their crew to help us out and stuff like All our gear went on, on their lorry and stuff. So the, the, all the, the normal stuff that it makes it, you know, yeah. when you're abandoned as day jobs makes all that you know would make a tour very difficult they made it really really easy for yeah us. yeah it's just perfect what they did and they couldn't help us enough seriously anything that we wanted they'd say you know just ask for it and we didn't ask for it but jim i mean wanted, jim glenny was you know the first to say that they got help in their, in their early careers as well and that they've like supported like jesus and mary jane and people like that and um, so, the bunny man i think i was going to ask so when you were out on tour then because uh, it was a 15 date tour that wasn't it uh, yeah, exactly. all in all, yeah. yeah. I think the initial tour was 13 dates, and then, um, yeah, there was a few more at the end yeah. of the year that, that we did. So how do you, like, do you sort of flip a coin about who's topping and tailing in the digs and all that? <laughs> who's the one person? Who's the one that no-one wants to, like, share a room with? No way. Fart or snore or... <laughs> <laughs> I don't share a room with any of them, yeah, it, You go yeah, home. Yeah, 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 he wants his own place. But we, we're not bothered. We uh, we all get on, so... and. They're not yeah. giving anything away, No, no, the thing is, we, we've slept in worse places than in like an hotel room or in a bed and breakfast or something, and we've been in worse situations, so we don't really care. So as, long as, as long as it's in a building. No, yeah, we, got, <laughs> we, we, got, we once slept in a van um, when we got like, we were recording the first album yeah. in Surrey, and the curfew, curfew for the hotel was 11 o'clock. We and we'd been that. to the pub, come, come back and come get in. And it was, and it, it was February, didn't wasn't star, it? Star it was in the, freezing. And that in the... Uh, in the, re, uh, in the foyer type thing oh, or whatever. That was bad. So, so being out on the road and finding it, find it diff finding difficult places to stay and sleep, is that why you all wear black? <laughs> yeah. like I guess it was a... It's a, it, it, it's it's just happened, um, it? It yeah, it kind of fit. And it, like in the early days, I think you were like in sports gear and I was in... Like, I mean, it, just tra it was a way to unify us, really, you know, so and you make it look like we sort of... No shots. On the same flaps. page, kind of thing. No, no, no. Yeah. David, yeah. tracky band. You were a tracky band? No, no, no. No. Uh, <laughs> That's it. James. So, so Slow Readers Club have been around for 13 years. Uh, Jarvis Cocker, he famously said uh, that Pulp didn't change what they did. It's just that people, <clears throat> they changed around them. So do bands like Pulp and Elbow, who've you know, been around for a long time and then done amazing, you know, really, do they sort of give you faith for the future? I'd say so. Yeah, I get it, yeah. I think, it, uh, I mean, for us, it, we've, Slow Ridge Club have been around since 2008, and then Jim and I were in Omerta before that, so that's probably where the 13, the 13 years comes yeah. from, but I mean, eight, you know, since 2008 is a, is a, is a long time anyway, but um, I think we've always had faith in what we do, um, and then especially with the second album, getting six music play and, and all that, and it's yeah. just, it's been building over a period of time and then working our way up through venues and stuff, and doing it at DIY, as 
proven all right for us. I mean, people, yeah. word of, word is eventually spread, and obviously the James thing was was a massive help. Huge. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's certainly going in the right direction. It feels like. Do you we're see breaking through a bit now? Sorry to cut you. So sorry, right. sorry, sorry. You see age as an obstacle. Um, and. I don't know. I think being you, a spring you do. chicken myself, you know. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I think you do, don't you? You're conscious of it within lot of, like the music industry, but I think we kind of stopped caring about that yeah. years ago. We probably stopped caring about that about three or four years ago, to be honest, because we just carry on trying to do what, what we do and try and write as good a songs as we can do. It's, it's not an obstacle. It's an, well, it's an obstacle in the sense that you can't just go give up your job in Top Man and go and do yeah. a 35 date tour. We're not in that position, so it's an obstacle obstacle in that regard. But it seems yeah. to be. I mean, we, we we try and focus on major cities when we tour, and with the you know at the end of last year we sold out in Dublin and London and Manchester, and we do all right in Sheffield, and we have look we have we have cities that we're doing well in. So yeah. it's just a case of being more that, yeah being more selective and, and doing what we can around day jobs at the moment. Let's go and do anything yeah. we want, mm-hmm. 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 which actually probably works in our favour because I think that's how we have the success. And this year will be successful as well. We get better as well. The music gets, gets well, you better do, as we you go You sound on. great. It's very pro- professional, wonderful music. Thank but you. Radio play, tours, selling venues out. What, what's missing? Uh, I've got to ask. Is it? Do you, do you need a, a record deal? A big record deal. I think a big record deal with a lot of money behind it that would mean we could <laughs> quit our jobs and pay our mortgages would obviously make a big difference, and it would accelerate the writing process because you'd have you'd have more time to spend on it and stuff. Um, it's, it's weird, isn't it? I don't, I don't know whether they exist anymore, though, big record deals. Um, but to get where we are now with no... I'm not saying help. We have had little, you know, people, obviously, in the background who will help us out, but with no real help, you know, big help, whether, you know, having a manager who knows people, who knows people, or having a label who does this and that. To get where we are now, working full-time, anyone that did get involved with a band, you know, they'd know that we're not we're not having a laugh sort of thing we, we we're very serious about the band it's just that our jobs sort of get in the way of it but that's life <laughs> isn't it? it's just life we have to deal with it our boss is not much <laughs> I don't really care <laughs> so, um, what is actually why you label the music indie electro doom pop um, it was just a, I think we had it, it was a reviewer that used the term doom pop and it seemed to at the time to be a uh, strap line that he could use that, that, that was uh, I mean off, before that we've said indie electro just as a as a as a genre tag but yeah yeah but um you know I think uh, Gary was saying earlier like it it, it is probably isn't uh, doesn't doesn't reflect what we do properly so you um, must change bit, it right well, I'll tell <laughs> us to get stuff you know I, no. I scribbled this down when you were playing because it was a part of the question and listening to you play it's shiny shimmering classic pop and as soon as you put indie in there, it kind of takes it down to third division, C minus, but could be all right. No. <laughs> and the pop does it. Doom's all right, because I mean, we, we like goth, we like some classic. Yeah. You know, yeah. Stranglers were you know, yeah. a bit doom. Jordy was a bit gloomy. You know, you two are a bit gloomy. Kevin Joe a bit gloomy, but they all made great tunes, great songs, and they're very m- melodic. And I think the one thing mm. in your music, it's so uplifting and tuneful. Thank so you. to take yeah. it all the way back from you, if I give a compliment, is then to sort of think, indie. And then do just say you know step up a bit with your marketing. I know you're no, no, doing that. No, 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 no. I mean, no, 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 I mean that, those kind of outside yeah. uh, comments are, are, we, we welcome them. Do you know what I mean? And I think you, what you're saying is probably right. It's just right. people ask for that, don't they? They always ask for well, you know, yeah. information. No, 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 and, then, no, no, no. and then we and we we've obviously written that. And then I just think it's probably that we've just left it because we've been focusing on the stuff. <laughs> I know it's, no, no. it's it's not. We should probably focus on that, and we should probably change it. I think that's it. I think from my perspective, it's probably me that's written, that's put that there, if you know what I mean. And it's from my yeah, perspective, it's... I'm thinking about it lyri- lyrically, and it, lyrically it is quite sort of downbeat. Whereas, you know, obviously more melodically and everything else, it is yeah, quite uplifting. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I'd no. take Just point. Put, we're dead good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all you yeah. need to know. Well, we, yeah. we used to. We were chatting earlier. We used to. And it was maybe the wrong reference for your band, but musically keen. And I know a friend of mine would say used to think having a keen album was akin to you know going to prison. <laughs> but we it all the way because the great songs, beautiful songs, and they sold tons. They looked oh, a bit yeah. odd. They weren't quite as edgy, which is no, no disrespect to King, but you don't look odd. And you've got that, you know, <laughs> but you've got that, that, you know, that, you've got that edgy but wholesome. This is, again's coming out wrong, but good-looking tight band who looked like a proper union. Right. 
And with, all, with the greatest disrespect to King, they didn't. Mm. And they had to change that. Yeah. But in the process, they, they sold tons of LPs. I yeah. think so we're, we're comfortable being accessible. I, I think we try. I, I'm always of the mind that we try and write something that's accessible that's going to communicate to as many people as possible. For me, you want to, and I think I'd imagine that Keen were of the same mind, or like we're trying to write pop songs essentially, mm. albeit you know in an indie genre. But um, I think we do write, try and write pop music in the sense of. Beatles or ABBA or yeah, anybody, the Bee Gees or anybody else. I mean, those are cheesy sort of guilty pleasures for a lot of people. But yeah. I, I admire those. I know my, you know, my people at Keen or Coldplay or anybody that's sort of gone and done that and been been successful on that level. Is, but, is, yeah. is there a door opening with you two going back 30 years? Bringing up Joshua Tree, classic album, lauded, and you either it's a love and hate thing with you two. Mm. You're coming back, bringing guitar music, brilliant drumming, you know, rocking bass, fantastic vocals. Yeah. Okay, back in the <laughs> <laughs> You've got a great guitar sound. So you, your guitar sound sounds fantastic. Beautiful and clear and crystal edge, yeah. clear. No, but you've got to say, looks to that. <laughs> yeah. if, if those references to four guys who look going to make great music, then why can't you be selling out your world tour of you know, a million tickets know. in 10 minutes? What's stopping you? <laughs> we'll see. I don't no, know. It's just, we, we, I think the more our music gets out there, to people and the more people listen to it um, we do pick up more fans and I know, it, I know it's it's quite obvious but it, it happens like on on the James gigs and I don't want to keep going back to it but on the James gigs that the band were saying to us um, all of them you know Tim, Jim, Saul um, and, and the other lads in the band they've, the reaction they've had from us as a support has been bigger than any of their acts they've had with them and they've had Coldplay have supported them um, Radiohead. Radiohead Stereophonics have supported them. And, you know, they, we were laughing about it. They were sort of saying, we, our sport acts end up being bigger than us. Um, but, yeah, they, they, they couldn't sort of um, speak highly of us, really. Well, as high as, as they did, because they, they really helped us out. And I don't know what's stopping us. It's just. I think it's, it's, the, the fortunate thing with the, um, with the Change Tour as well was that we could, we live streamed every set that we did. Yeah. And that, that then fed the, ne- the crowd at the next venue. Mm. So I'd seen, there, I'd yeah. seen it, and obviously James fans were speaking to one another. So you felt in the room, though, that, that, that people would knew who you were more so than they would would have done had, we, had it been completely cold. So, um, but yeah, it's been. So, been I think a bigger support, like not bigger. I mean, just like this, if we, we were to support another band, I don't know, That's on another level or index. whatever, you know, we, we know we pick up fans, and it's just a case of we just need to keep plugging away. There's no sort of killer missing ingredient that would make it huge obviously if a label come in with a load of money and, and marketing behind it that would help but support that the, the thing that's at, at the minute accessible for us is supporting another act who right. has more fans than we play in front of them. we're ending on a high lego <laughs> building slow readers getting bigger and bigger <laughs> uh, i can't even think of a metaphor for that uh, so I won't even try. So, the biggest supports james has ever had you're the next one you're going to be bigger than james next 18 months I hope so (laughs) we'll see thanks for coming thank Thank you you. cheers Cheers for that thank you thank you This is Sounds Television.